Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Today, we are going to talk about pets. And I'm not sure if you can hear, but we have dogs in the neighborhood. A number of the houses that around me have dogs. And right now, I hear a dog just barking. Um, so we'll be talking about pets you have, pets that you would like to have, pets you owned in the past, pets you never have, pets you wish you never had, and most popular pets and the most dangerous and more. And good morning, Talking America. Thank you for joining. Um, so right now I have my, actually my cat is sleeping right next to me, so I don't want to disturb him, but hopefully my daughter is going to wake up and she's going to bring out our pets and introduce them one by one. We have four pets. We have two cats and two rabbits. And our cats we have had for about four years now, I believe. They're, we got them when they were eight weeks old. And we have our rabbits now. I think the rabbits are like maybe two or three years old. I can't remember exactly, but we definitely got them about a year before COVID. Um, and the rabbits we got when they were probably similar, they were probably like eight weeks old as well. So if you're just joining now, um, please hit that like and we're talking about pets. I'd love to know what I'd love to know where you're coming from. I'd love to know um, if you have any pets or if you had any pets, please let me know in the comments what kind of pets you have. Um, let's see, I have, I'm not sure if I'm going to say your name right, but let's see. Um, Len, Len, a Luna Tico, Luna Tico. Um, yeah, let's see. Well, let me see. I can pick up my sleeping cat here. Here is my sleeping cat. He's probably not going to be too happy, but here we are. Thank you for joining from India. This is Ross and he is, I think he might be like five years old actually. Cause I think that we got him five years ago when he was just about eight weeks old and we have his brother sleeping in the other room. So I'm hoping that my daughter will bring his brother Jasper in. So like I said, we have two cats and two bunnies. I just put Ross back down. He's sitting by me and he usually always steals the seat that I'm sitting in. Um, so uh, Rocky, do you have any pets? I think Rocky, you're from India, right? Do you have any pets or did you have any? Please let me know. Oh, okay. Luna Tico, you said you have a beagle. So actually dogs are the most popular pet in the world. I personally like cats, but I do like dogs. Um, and let's see, um, Talking America has a Siamese cat and Li um, English with Lila. Um, good evening. Good morning. Good evening. It's morning here. It's good evening in India. I'm ready to ask you questions. So please ask me questions. We're talking about dogs. Or we're talking about pets, not dogs. Um, and Rocky has, uh, my friend has a dog. So dogs are the most popular. There are more than 471 million dogs in the world, apparently according to a website, and they are the most popular. We have Della Pagna, hello teacher, um, and you are from the um, Cameroons Islands. Um, thank you for joining. We're talking about pets and dogs. I, we have um, Talking America has a Siamese cat. I have two cats and two bunnies, so a total of four pets. And dogs are the most popular in the world. They are, let's see, for about... 15,000 years they have been living with us, with us, with us humans, right? And they are coming from, we domesticated wolves. Um, and there are over 343 million different breeds of dogs. Something interesting about dogs is that the breeders can kind of breed different like traits and stuff, but cats are something that you really can't um, do that with. Um, Rocky says, what about my vacation to the beach? I'm leaving tomorrow. So tomorrow I am leaving to the beach. And um, if you see my shirt, it might be backwards. I'm not sure. Let me know if it says Boston backwards. Um, it didn't say that earlier, but I think that somehow this flipped the video. Um, so let's see. I'm preparing for it. Yes, I've been packing for it. And yeah, we're going to be packing up the car. So I packed all the clothing and Something interesting about the beach, when they go and you go camping, you can bring your animal to the beach. You can bring your dogs. Most A lot of people bring their dogs to the beach, and they have to have a license, like a, a license that they show the um, the campground, but they can bring their dogs and have their dogs. Some people might bring cats to the beach, but most people bring dogs to the beach or to the um, 
to the campground, the dogs are not allowed on the beach, but there's also a river and the river, they're allowed to bring the dogs on the river. So lots of people will have dogs. And before I started, I could hear dogs. Lots of people in my neighborhood have dogs and I could hear them barking outside. Um, so yes, I'll be leaving for a vacation tomorrow, two weeks camping at the beach. So I probably, I don't know, maybe I'll try to go live. And if I have good internet, I might go live and show everyone the beach, maybe give them a tour of my camper. I'm not sure. But today we're talking about pets and what kind of pets people have and what kind of pets that you did have in the past. If you, what, which, what do you like better? Who likes, um, you know, do you like dogs or cats better? Um, I've had many pets. Um, I've had guinea pigs and gerbils and hamsters and fish. We one time had two hermit crabs. So they're little crabs and they live inside of like a, a shell and those were a little hard to take care of, actually. I thought they would be easier, but they weren't too easy to take care of. And apparently, they didn't live very long, um, sadly. But we've had fish. Um, my son had a beta fish, which he named it Voldemort from the Harry Potter movie. And that lasted about four years. And let's see. we Like I said, we have two rabbits. I had guinea pigs and hamsters. I've had uh, mice before in the past. All those I had when I was a kid. And then through my adult time, I've had cats. At one time, I had four cats. I would never suggest to get four cats unless you have a farm and can have them outside. Four, four cats is not a good idea. Um, if you're joining new, please hit the like and tell me where you're coming from. And let me know if you have any pets. Let me know what kind of pets you have. Like I said, I have, um, I have two cats and two rabbits. And let's see. So... Cats are the second most popular um, pet in the world. And um, I have another website open. It says that there are 374 million domestic cats, more than that. And there are, let's see, they have, um, they like to sleep between 12 and 16 hours a day. And I can tell you that is absolutely true. My cat Ross here, I picked him up at the beginning. I can pick him up again. Um, he's sitting by me. He was sleeping um, in the chair next to me, and he always likes to steal the chair that I'm sitting in. So as soon as I get up, he would just come and take this chair and steal it and fall asleep in it. So I can tell you from experience, they do sleep 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, of all the pets I've had, I like cats the best. Um, rabbits are cute and very soft, but they don't play with you. They don't cuddle. They don't have much of a personality, in my opinion. Um, and quite frankly, they're kind of messy. Um, our rabbits live on our three season porch where I actually video a lot. I make a lot of the videos there that I made it kind of in a studio into a studio. And I have like a double kind of like cage for them because if you have two rabbits, well, first of all, the two girls and their sisters, but they can't live in the same cage because they get kind of territorial. And we got them as little baby rabbits and they did live in the same cage. But the woman said, you better get two cages for them because they'll get territorial. And that happened. Like one of them started to kind of bite the other. So um, the cats always fight with other cats. Well, that is true. Um, my two cats don't fight too much, but one of them will kind of like kind of be waiting to attack the other one as he's like walking by. Um, so one of my cats is definitely the dominant cat. And the other one, the reason why you might not even see it is he'll hide a lot just from people and from the other cat in the house. So yes, they do fight with other cats. Um, fortunately, my cats don't really fight, but one is kind of like bullying the other for sure. But then I will, you know, I will often find them sleeping all cuddled together. So I think overall they get along, but I think with cats are, you know, don't know each other. They definitely will fight. Um, I've had cats and then try to get another cat and that doesn't go very well at first. They'll start to like growl at each other and start to fight. So it takes a while to kind of get them, um, used to each other. Hello, Julio. Um, you are coming from Colombia. Um, thank you for joining. We're talking about pets and I've been telling people about my two cats. Um, and I have two rabbits at one time I had four cats. Um, and they were indoor cats and that was a bit of a problem. So indoor cats, that's not a good idea. If you live on a farm and you can have 
cats outside, that's great, but indoor cats is not a good idea to have four. I think two is a good amount. Um, I have two rabbits. I'd love to know if you have any pets, um, if you have any animals or what kind of pet is your favorite pet. Um, dogs seem to be winning throughout the world. There are more dogs as pets than any other animal. 471 million dogs that are um, people keep as pets. I'm not exactly sure how they um, know that exact, well, it's not exact number, 471 million and probably extra than beyond that, and 373 million cats. So after that, hamsters are the most popular. The third most popular animal in the world are hamsters, and they are part of the rodent family. I've had hamsters, and I didn't really care for them. Again, they're cute, but they're not really, you can't really play with hamsters. So Julio says you, you have two pets, one dog and one cat named Ronnie and Susie. I um, hope I'm saying that right. So thank you. I have two cats. I Mine are Ross and Jasper. So thank you for sharing. Um, I do like dogs. I've never owned a dog though, um, but I do like dogs. Uh, if I did own a dog, I think I'd want one that's like a medium size. I, I think little dogs, in my opinion, that they bark a lot at everything. Everybody that's passing by, they're like just like kind of little barkers. Um, so if I did have a dog, I'd probably want like a medium sized dog, not a real small dog and not a really big dog, but a medium sized dog. But the reason I never got a dog is that they're just more work in my opinion, because well, here in the U S we would, people would be, have to take their dogs for walks. You have to keep on a leash. You can't just let your dogs wander around. Um, and so that is a lot of work. And although I love walking, I think, um, just having to do that every day or twice a day is just something I don't have time in my schedule for. Um, English with Lila says, I had a pet in, um, and the name was Doggy. He passed away due to health issues. I'm sorry about that. Um, so what are the best ways to care for pets? Um, so the best ways to care for pets, like I said, I have had cats and rabbits and I think the best way to, 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 um, care for them for me has been to make sure that they always have, you know, clean water, clean food. And for me, I have them indoors. So I clean litter boxes, you know, cleaning those litter boxes once a day. That's a lot of work. Uh, because I don't have outdoor cats, they I have litter boxes for them. So they have to be cleaned because otherwise, one is that I always think, what would I want? And if I was, you know, I would not want to have a bathroom that's gross, right? So I always, when I, every single day, cleaning out the litter boxes, cleaning out the litter boxes for the rabbits, because I give them what I would want, making sure they have clean water and making sure that they have the right amount of food. Animals can eat too much because in the wild, what your, your, a cat or a dog would be hunting and they wouldn't be eating too much. But cats that are domestic cats could eat too much because if their food is there all the time, you know, they would eat a lot. Now I have food that is a feeder that just, if they eat food, more food comes down, but it's a dry food. So they tend not to eat too much of that. But then I buy cans of the wet food and that I limit how much they can eat so they don't get overweight. Um, I brush them. One of my cats will get hairballs and he'll, and then he'll vomit. It's kind of gross. So I have a brush for the cat and I brush those cats. Now my daughter has to take those little rabbits and she's got to, she's got to clip the nails so they don't get too long. Um, so Rocky, how did you train them to go to the litter boxes? So, all right. So that's a good question. Cats and rabbits will just, just naturally start using a litter box because I think it's in their nature to kind of like go someplace where there's like a sand kind of thing and, and scratch and go and then cover it. So I didn't really have to train them. Um, I think dogs and anybody that has dogs, I've heard you have to train them. People will buy like a puppy pads and have their, cause at first the puppies will just go anywhere and they try to train them to go on those puppy pads. And then eventually they get them to the point that they go for walks and they do their thing in the neighborhood. Um, so cats though are pretty easy rabbits. I'm told and they generally will go in their little litter boxes, but they also go other places. So that's another reason why I'm not crazy about rabbits because I've had rabbits and 
we've had two rabbits and they will, sometimes they peed on me. I generally don't hold them anymore because of the fact that I don't want to be peed on. Um, they've gone on my furniture. So I asked my daughter to not have them on my furniture, play with them outside, you know, get a pad. So that way, if they go, then we can wash that pad because the rabbits will just go when they need to go. Um, people have told me that rabbits can be trained and they go always in their litter boxes, but that's not been my experience. But as far as cats, they're pretty easy. I had them since kittens and they always went in their litter boxes. I didn't have to really train them. I might have like picked them up and kind of put them in the litter boxes. So when they were really little, so they would see that that's where the sandy part was and where they should go. But it really wasn't hard to train them. They just kind of naturally, I think it's in their nature. Um, and so hamsters, I said, hamsters are number three. They're in the rodent family and they're really small, about this size. Now I had a number, when I was a kid, we lived in an apartment and we were not allowed to have dogs or cats. So we had gerbils and we had hamsters and guinea pigs. So first we had gerbils and then eventually we got a hamster and I didn't know I did not know that you cannot mix guinea pigs and hamsters. We had fish and you buy different fish and put them in the fish tank. They were fine. But when we got a hamster and put it into the cage of the guinea pigs, no, it was the dribbles. That was not a good idea. The, the dribbles attacked the hamster. So we got a different cage. Um, so Talking Merrick said, I have always found cats to be easy to train for house living. And they are pretty easy to train. Sometimes they have scratched my furniture, if you could see, there is like in that corner, let's see if I can point to it. In that corner, there is a chair and it's a material that they don't really like. And I'm glad because it's an antique chair, uh, but other chair that is almost like a velvety type of material, they like to claw. So I buy them things that they can climb on and that has things that they can scratch and try to encourage them to do that. And then I have tried to get just a squirt bottle. And if they, if I see them going to scratch my furniture, then I squirt them with water. So it doesn't hurt them, but it kind of trains them not to scratch the furniture that I don't want them to scratch. But that being said, pets do kind of, you know, not destroy your house, but they definitely like, if I go to sell this place, I would have to, um, you know, re-carpet because, you know, some carpets got a little messed up from the claws. I would probably have to like re-sand and, and redo all the woodwork because they, there are some places where they go and stretch and there's little bits of scratches. So if you have dogs or cats, you're probably going to have some damage. And that's probably why most apartments will not allow for pets or they would allow, but they would want you to put a deposit. So that way that the apartment could then, you know, re-carpet or repaint um, and fix any damage from animals because animals do damage, especially if you have animals that just have the free reign of your house. Uh, when I, when I said I had four cats, well, one cat I adopted and he was two years old. I adopted him from a farm. Somebody had dumped him at the farm. He was declawed. So he had no claws and he couldn't defend himself. So I adopted him and then he ended up he ended up kind of starting to pee around the house. So that was a problem. Um, I eventually got him out of that habit, but that was, that was a problem. I think it was because he was introduced to the other cats and he was marking his territory and he didn't live with the cats from an early age. So, you know, that was a big problem and trying to get the smell out was a really big problem. You know, sometimes you just have to re-carpet and, or, you know, if you have floors, it's one thing, but if you have carpet, there's no way to get that smell out. So that's why, you know, when I got my new house and I got, you know, ended up my daughter wanted to have kittens. I got two kittens, only two, and they seemed, they grew up together and we also got them fixed, which means that they cannot have further kittens. They cannot reproduce. But that's one thing that they do really encourage here in the U.S. is to fix the animals. And that keeps them also from spraying in the house because you know, dogs and cats are territorial. They will spray to kind of mark their territory. And so if they're not fixed, then that can be a problem, right? So Rocky says, what's the lifetime of a cat? Well, that's a good question. They can live like 12 to 20 years. My cats, the four cats that I had 
when I first was able to have my own place. They all lived between 15 and 18 years. And indoor cats live longer because there's, you know, they're not getting hit by cars, they're not getting attacked by other animals. So they definitely live longer. Um, and like I said, mine lived, I had four cats and they lived between 15 to 18 years, all of them different lifespans. Um, but they can live. I've known people that have cats that were up to 22 years. Um, Lila, English with Lila says, what pets are protecting for the humankind? Um, I, are you meaning like, I think what you're meaning is like pets that might protect you. I think dogs, people will get dogs for protection kind of to kind of like guard their house, guard their property. Um, and they'll be like, I know in our neighborhood will say like, you know, beware of dog. Um, there's a dog that lives in my neighbor's house and he's got a fence and that dog is always, always barking, always barking. Even though I know my neighbor and I'll say, hi, Bella, that's the name of the dog. That dog barks and it growls and it's almost scary if there wasn't two fences between me and that dog. I'm almost scared of that dog. So any case, I would think dogs would be what people would get for, um, oh, in terms of rescue. Well, rescue too, you know, rescue would be dogs. Dogs have been known to rescue. They can actually detect COVID. They can detect people with cancer. Um, they will have dogs because dogs have, they can smell, they have the most smell glands of almost any other animal. So there's like no way that you can possibly hide a smell from a dog. So they can smell and go into like um, wreckage and smell for humans and stuff to try to save them. And so that would be the animal I would think would be for, for rescuing would be dogs because they can find humans. I know that they've sent them into, into um, areas where there might've been um, disaster areas and try to like smell for humans to be able to rescue them. And in addition, if there are like people are lost, you can give them like have them smell the clothing or something from that person. And that dog will have that and they'll go and find that person. They can hunt them down. So I would think dogs would be, I'm not sure what other people think, but I would think dogs would be the best. Uh, Vinesh says, ma'am, because if you ask me about it, I had, I had pets, dogs and cats. Um, and you've had a squirrel um, and a bird, I think. I'm not sure. So did you have all those things? Um, cats, dogs, squirrels and birds. I'm not sure if that's what you mean. I love squirrels. We cannot, there are certain pets that we can't have because of the fact that they would be high, um, high chance of rabies. Uh, and so in, in every state is different. So in Massachusetts, it would not be allowed. You cannot have a squirrel. We have lo lots of squirrels and I actually feed them. I've made videos about that, but I can't have squirrels. I cannot have raccoons. I cannot have skunks lots of different animals that would be a chance of rabies, like animals with high chances of rabies. In addition, those animals tend to not make good pets. Um, so let's see, birds, we can have birds here and people do have birds. I, that's not my thing. I think they're pretty and cute, but they're very noisy and I would not want to have a bird, but people do have birds. But there's, people that will have animals that they're not supposed to have around here. And like some people, I live in Massachusetts and some people go to another state where you can get an alligator, for instance, and they'll have this alligator and alligators live a really long time. I think they might live up to a hundred years and they get really big. So sometimes they have let them go and that's been a problem. But other times there's a place called animal adventures where Somebody has an alligator and it's illegal and they find that's becoming a problem. It's too big. So they'll contact a place called Animal Adventures and they'll give that animal to uh, Animal Adventures. Um, other people have had things like pythons and other animals that they're not supposed to have. Sometimes those animals have gotten away. So every state in the United States has different rules about what kind of pets you can have. So in Massachusetts, where I live, you cannot have alligators. You cannot have squirrels, you cannot have raccoons. I don't know every single animal you can't have, but there's a lot of different animals that you can't have in Massachusetts. But you could go to Florida, for instance, 
you could go to Connecticut and get some of these other animals and bring them illegally here. And people do that. And then sometimes they find these animals are hard to take care of and they sometimes let them go. So sometimes they'll get, um, they'll get a report that, oh, there's an alligator inside of this pond. They have to go catch the alligator. And then they have a place, like I said, there's a place not close to here that's called Animal Adventures. So if a pet bites, what should we do? Well, pet bites can be very dangerous. So I would definitely go and get medical help if you get bit by an animal. Now, as I said, certain animals that you can't have as a pet, if you were ever to get scratched or bit, there was a story about a woman that went to Australia and there was like an, a cat and apparently she got scratched by it. It was a wild cat um, or what we call a feral cat and she got scratched by it. Now that scratch healed and she went back to England where she's from. Now she should have immediately gone to get what's called rabies shots, right? And she didn't. And by the time they figured out that she had rabies, there was nothing they could do. Like she ended up dying from it. So it can be very dangerous. And so if you get scratched, and I've heard of other people that have taken in um, wild cats, what we call feral cats, um, that can be a very dangerous thing to do. So I would say if you are going to do that, you should be very, very careful, handle them very carefully, bring them to a vet and have them tested for rabies and have them get rabies shots. Um, and then make sure that you wait until the rabies shots are going to be, you know, that you have them tested and that the rabies shots are, are effective before you start handling those animals. Uh, but even my cats, if they were to bite me, I would need to go to the hospital and probably have that because you can get infections. Even if they don't have rabies, there's other infections that you can get from getting bitten by any sort of animal. So I would definitely seek, um, call a doctor. I don't know exactly what you can get, but like I said, if it's any sort of wild animal, especially any that would have rabies, then you could possibly get those. So you would want to contact your doctor. I know people that were staying in a cabin, they were camping and they, um, there was a bat in their cabin and they didn't know, they, they, they found out the bat was in the cabin and the doctor said, you need to get shots. Cause even if there's no scratches or no bites, you were sleeping in that cabin and there could have been, the bat could have scratched you and bats are very high chance of rabies. Um, Kat, you want to bring my daughter, Kat, do you want to bring Jasper or the rabbits or something? Okay. So any case, they had to go get shots because of the fact that they could have possibly been scratched while they were sleeping and that if they got rabies, they would die. So you need to get the rabies shot. So if you do get bitten by an animal, I would call a doctor, call a medical professional. I'm not a medical professional, but I can tell you there are chances of getting infections and or rabies if it ends up being like a wild animal with a high chance of rabies. Um, so let's keep on talking about pets. If you are new, please hit the like button and please let me know what kind of animals that you have. Um, we are going to have our second cat, which is this cat, Jasper, is usually always sleeping or hiding. Um, we got the two cats together. What was it like five years ago? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we got them together. They were eight weeks old when we got them. And this one usually hides all day long. And in the morning when I'm drinking coffee, he comes and sits on my lap. But most of the time he's hiding. So. Let's see. Oh. So Vignette, you said maybe I had I had a love for birds. And it was presented on my sister. So you got a present, oh, a present for you from your sister's birthday. Um, I bought two birds and one of the birds died. Um, and so another bird was kept in the cage. So it's unfortunate. Yeah, that's another reason why birds are hard to take care of. So that's probably why I would not want to get birds because they're hard to take care of. Which animal do you think is dangerous? Well, let's see. There are many animals that are dangerous. I mean, some more than others. People, like I said, people have had alligators. You know, there's people that have had tigers. Um, those are definitely dangerous. Travel Bloom, thank you for joining. Let me know where you're from. And we're talking about animals, animals that you had, animals that you um, want to have. We're talking about pets um, in particular. And a lot of talk about cats and dogs. And we're saying what would be dangerous animals. Now, most dangerous animals, I actually looked it up. 
So these are the most dangerous animals to have as pets. Um, let's see, in order of the most dangerous would be reptiles. Um, so according to the Humane Society, uh, in the United States, 18 deaths were attributed to exotic reptiles, including pythons, boa constrictors, rattlesnakes, and iguanas. That's from 1990 to 2011. Um, so I'm, I'm from the United States. I live near Boston in Massachusetts. And here I have two cats and two rabbits with, so that's a total of four pets. And let's see, we'll let this one go away. Would you like to travel? Um, no, I, I will, I'm probably not going to travel, um, outside of the U S for a while, but I am going camping soon. I'm going camping actually tomorrow for two weeks. So any case, reptiles would be the most dangerous. Um, and that is according to some website that I looked up, the most dangerous animals that you could have as pets. Um, and let's see. So Cat will bring our two rabbits, maybe one at a time next, um, because they're hard to carry two of them. So any case, um, so I, well, why do I love pets? I love cats the best. I mean, just they're, I mean, I think they're calming to pet them. They're fun. One of my cats, this one here, uh, Ross, he likes to play fetch. He actually must think he's a dog. And I will throw something to him. I'll throw it and he'll come and bring it back. And here comes a rabbit. This one is named Coconut. And um, it feels a little wet. So this is coconut, and we've had these rabbits. This is one of them. They're sisters. We've had them for three years. Um, and advantages. What are the advantages of having pets? What do you think, Katarina? What are the advantages? Um, they're cute. They're cute. They're fun. I mean, I think cats are a little bit more fun than rabbits. Um, like I said, one of the cats we have, we can play fetch with it um, if you pet them. Like people actually will have rabbits and they'll bring rabbits to people to pet as a kind of like, almost a, they'll call them therapy rabbits. Um, there's therapy dogs. Like in the US, like we have dogs that will help people that are blind, but we also have dogs that will help people with PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress syndrome. Um, so they'll bring, they'll bring dogs to colleges for, for students to pet during the times that they're studying for all their exams and they're getting really stressed for their exams. So they'll bring therapy dogs for the college students to be able to come and pet. So petting a dog or a cat actually re, um, reveals some stress. Um, so here is the other rabbit. This one is called Cloud because it's white and it's an albino cat. I mean, by albino, funny. <laughs> It's not a cat. It's not a cat. It's not a cat. It's a bu albino bunny. It has it has pink eyes um, and white fur. And let's see. Um, so these two rabbits, we've had them for three years, and they are what are what kind of rabbits are they? Netherland dwarf. Netherland dwarf. So there's there's lots of different kinds. How many kinds of rabbits are there? Do you know? I mean, there's too many. Too many, a lot of different breeds. Katarina was in a program called 4-H. And 4-H, um, I don't remember exactly what 4-H stands for, but um, basically it's all about really like learning about animals and learning how to take care of animals. And her particular group was learning how to um, take care of rabbits and learning about rabbits. And that's how we ended up getting these two rabbits because at the end of the year, the woman that was running the program, she had like 30 rabbits because she had all these kids coming as part of the club. And she actually um, she actually was giving them away, not giving away, she was selling them. So yeah, that's how we ended up getting two rabbits. What we, my daughter asked for one and I thought that one would be lonely. So I decided to get two. I didn't know that I would need to get like two cages because you really can't have two rabbits, even if they're two girl rabbits, they can't be in the same cage because they get territorial and that's a problem. So any case, um, if you are new here, please let me know where you're from. Please hit the like button and let me know what kind of pets that you have. 
Um, we were talking about dangerous pets and the most dangerous, number one dangerous pets is, um, is reptiles. Um, we um, travel asked, do I have birds? I don't have any birds. We we're talking about that. I don't really know. Birds are too much work. The next number two dangerous um, animal to have would be alligators or crocodiles. I was talking about people that had those in Massachusetts and they weren't supposed to. And that was a problem. Vinesh says, um, some people had tigers. Yes. And that is also on this list. There's actually some very popular, I haven't watched it, but was it the Tiger King on Netflix? Um, and Lions. And one of my favorite movies is called, um, what was it called? It was called Born Free. And it's about, it's, it's based in Kenya. And it's about these people that ended up having two lions. And then they, their parent lion had gotten shot. And they adopted the lions and they ended up keeping one. And then the authorities said they had to they had to either set, give them to a zoo because they were becoming a problem. So the the um, woman decided to train that lion to become wild again and hunt for itself. Um, that's one of my favorite um, movies. Any case, and it's based on a true story. So learning English. Thank you for learn English. One more language joined. And I have chickens as a pet. Um, but outside in the backyard, you know, I really would like to get chickens. The only thing is that there's, you know, it's more work. I have the cats and I have the rabbits, but I, I love chickens. My daughter loves chickens. She actually just went to a two week camp and there was a, there was a farm at this camp. And one of her favorite things was to hold the chickens and take care of the chickens. Um, so it's something that I would like to do, but then it's just another thing to do. Like I'm going camping for two weeks and I have to arrange for my cats to be taken care of and the and the rabbits to be taken care of so then i would have to arrange for the the um, chickens to be taken care of um travel bloom says okay something oh in china they eat snakes and alligators yes that is true some of these animals that we have as pets other places eat them but anyway um we're just talking about people that um animals that we have as pets not animals that we eat that could be another whole different topic so we'll just continue talking about, um, and lions, that's the third most dangerous um, animal to have as a pet. Um, like I said, my favorite movie as a child, and I still love it, is called Born Free, where they actually had a lion as a pet. And only because the husband was a gamekeeper, and I believe the story was, and it's based on a true story, there was a lion that was like attacking a village. He was actually the game warden. And he had to go and shoot the lion, but he ended up accidentally shooting the mother lion. And then he ended up taking the cubs home and they took care of the cubs and they brought them up. And two of the cubs they gave away to a zoo, but they kept one and they raised it. And after like two or three years, it started to become a problem in the village and they were forced to get rid of the lion or give it to a zoo. They didn't want to do that. The mother, Actually, she wasn't a mother. She didn't have children. The wife didn't want to do that. She wanted to have that 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 lion go back to the wild. So they were given six months to train that lion to be able to hunt for itself. And they successfully did that. Um, do you have any other domestic animals and birds? I don't have any more, but I did have, I've had guinea pigs. I've had hamsters. I've had gerbils. I've had fish. I've never had birds. I've had mice. I've had all those animals because when I was a kid, we weren't allowed to have cats or dogs. I loved cats and my cousin had a farm and they had tons of cats and I would go there and play with cats all the time. Um, if you're new, please hit the like and please let me know where you're from. Um, we're talking about animals and I, was, I was said the third most dangerous animal, I would think it would be number one, but I think it's number three because not many people have lions for pets. So it's the third most dangerous animal to have as a pet is a lion. Um, because I think not many people have them as pets. I think they're probably, it's much easier to probably get a reptile as a pet, um, but then again, it can be dangerous. Vignesh says, um, both pets were so cute. Thank you. I noticed them crawling. Um, I noticed you, oh yeah, I have lots of videos where the animals are in our videos. The cats and the rabbits, they're in a lot of our videos. Um, we like to have them because, well, we like animals. So what do we have in most of our videos? We have, they're about food or they're about pets. Like, cause we love food and we love animals. So that's what you'll see a lot of our videos being about. Um, I think part of YouTube and I actually just taught a two week camp at my daytime job about YouTube. 
One of the things is make videos about things that you like. And, you know, I like this channel because I can make videos about all kinds of things that I like because everything is a topic to learn English, right? Learning about animals is a topic to learn about English. Learning about food is a topic to learn about English. So I can make videos about things that I like. So number four animal that is the most dangerous in the world are owls, apparently. I'm not sure how many people have owls as pets. I mean, Harry Potter had, you know, but he was a fictional character. Um, but apparently they are dangerous to have. And one of my favorite things, um, there's a program called Birds of Prey. And this person has a special license because in Massachusetts, you can't have owls and you can't have falcons or eagles as pets. But there's people that have special licenses from the federal government for education and for taking care, care of animals um, that have gotten hurt. So he takes care of this guy, takes care of animals that their wing got hurt or maybe they were, you know, a lot of animals because they're birds of prey. They dive down by highways to try to like capture things, but they end up getting hit by a car. So their wings get hurt or maybe their vision and now they can't live in the wild anymore. So this, this guy is but special license to have them and take care of them and give them a place to live. Sometimes if he can heal them, they'll release them again. But if they can't, he brings them to different places and he shows them as kind of education for the public to learn more about those animals. So I've seen him come around and there's other people around the whole country that do this, but this particular person, um, he comes around and he brings about like 10 different birds. They're all in a special box, a wooden box, and he takes them out and he holds them. Sometimes he brings them around and sometimes you can touch them, sometimes you can't. He's brought around eagles and owls and um, turkey hawks and all those type of things. So, but they don't make good pets. Um, they're the fourth most dangerous animal to have apparently. So I would think they're not gonna be a good pet to have. Um, other pets you can have if you want birds would be like parrots and parakeets. I think those are um, pretty good birds, but noisy um, and maybe a little bit hard to take care of. Uh, cats are very easy. Uh, so if you're new here, please hit the like and please let me know where you're from. We're talking about pets. Apparently the fifth most dangerous animal is bears. I'm not sure who would have a bear as a pet, uh, but they are dangerous and the fifth most dangerous. We have some bears, they're, they're not pets, but we have bears. Um, I have not seen them, but there's bears in my town. Uh, because we build in so many places, there's less places for those bears to live. So they do come into our neighborhoods. Vignesh says, have you had any pets in my childhood days? Yes. I had, first I had fish, and then I had gerbils. Then I had a hamster. I thought that the hamsters and gerbils could live together, but they couldn't. So I had to get a separate cage. I had guinea pigs. And so when I got the first guinea pig, um, the first guinea pig was pregnant, apparently. And we didn't know that. So then we had little baby guinea pigs and we gave all but one away. And we thought if we had the mother and a child guinea pig, that'd be fine. We didn't know the mother and child would then kind of get together and have more guinea pigs. So I had no idea. But guinea pigs, rabbits, they're all going to, they, you know, they will, they don't say, oh, they multiply like rabbits for, for nothing. It's because of the fact that their lifespan is so small. And if there's danger, they need to keep on, you know, producing. And they will produce at a very young age. I think we went to a, my daughter being in 4-H, we went to a workshop on rabbits and found out that at age three months, those rabbits are ready to start um, having more rabbits. So you need to kind of move them out of the cage with the mom and move them into separate separate cages. Um, so yes, I had all these different animals because when I was a kid, I loved, loved, loved cats, but I lived in an apartment and I was not allowed to have cats. So we had fish first and then we had, we had the um, gerbils and we had this really cool, like they were tunnels the gerbils could run through and stuff and climb. That was kind of fun, but they didn't make good pets. Like if you took them out, they would bite you. And they would just sometimes they'd get away and then you'd have to try to catch them because you don't want gerbils to be like kind of wandering around in your house. Um, so they don't make the best pets, in my opinion. Um, hamsters were, again, they're very cute, 
Um, apparently, hamsters live about a year and a half to two years. So um, they, if you want a pet that you don't want to have for a really long time, I guess they can live up to three years. Um, so you, okay, I also had a hamster, but it died a few years ago. Yeah, so it's apparently, according to another website, they live about a maximum of three years. So one and a half to three years. My hamster didn't live that long. Apparently, we, I don't know, we didn't have good luck or we didn't take good care of it, but I was a kid. And so talking about popular fit, pop, popular, popular pets, um, fish are very popular. I said my son had a fish. He had a beta fish. And beta fish, you cannot put two together because they will just attack each other, apparently. Um, fish are the fourth most popular um, animal to have in the whole entire world. Um, pretty easy to take care of. You got to kind of clean their tank or their or their bowl. Um, but they're, they're pretty easy to take care of. They can be more complicated. Like I know somebody that had saltwater fish and those are more complicated to take care of. Um, and I think they're calming because one benefit of fish, like I used to just like watching them. So, you know, I think that they're, they're calming to watch. Um, so that would be the benefit of having fish. I think the benefit of having any pets is just like some sort of companionship. Um, they're fun to watch. Um, if you have hamsters, gerbils, you can get these like kind of like tunnel things for them to run through or the hamsters you get a wheel for them to run through and that's kind of fun but we'll also keep you up at night because those hamsters, if they're sleeping, if you're sleeping in the same room, they're gonna be running and making lots of noise at night. Um, Learning English said that I had fish a long time ago. I, yeah, I had fish as a kid. I had a whole fish tank and we used to go to the store and you'd buy a fish or two fish and they would put it in a plastic bag and you take it home. And then I think you had to kind of get that water, you know, you had to kind of put it in another, like that plastic bag in kind of try to get the water temperature to be the same before you dumped it in with your other fish. Um, so having fish, I liked having fish. It was fun, um, easy. My mother did all the work of cleaning the tank, so I didn't have to do that. I just, you know, put the food in. You have to make sure that kids don't overfeed the fish because they just want to like dump all the food in. Um, but I think cleaning the tank was one of the most, you know, the most work for it and something I didn't do. My mother had done that for me. Um, so fish a fish can live in a tank for up to 30 years apparently um and they were first domesticated in china more than a thousand years ago so there's a little bit of trivia or information for you they're cheap um to buy and they don't need a lot of space and they're inexpensive like we go to a, a pet store and there's some fish that are just 12 cents american money to buy but there are other fish that are like 22 dollars for one fish so they're, you know, all different prices. And these are just freshwater fish. I think the saltwater fish are a lot more expensive and are a lot harder to take care of. Some people will actually pay someone that knows how to take care of those saltwater fish because of them being kind of hard to take care of. Um, how many people have seen Finding, Finding Nemo? I like that movie. That was about, you know, remember the fish that got caught and then he got put inside the tank at the dentist office. Um, and then just was trying to get back to his father. So um, fish would be the fourth most popular pet in the world. So if you're new here, hit the like button and let me know what kind of animals you have. The fifth most popular animal in the whole entire world are would be a mouse or mice. If we have more than one mouse, we say they're, they're mice, they're not mouses, right? So here is my mouse that I have. It's my mouse, but it's very easy to take care of, right? But mice, they smelled. You have to keep on cleaning their their whatever. You're going to keep them inside of a cage or whatnot. You're going to put like some sort of um, bedding in there for them to do their thing and for them to kind of like burrow into. But they pee and poop in there and you have to keep on changing it because it stinks. Um, and so that's why I didn't really like mice. Plus, they're, they, they don't really want to be handled. Um, they will bite, they will try to get away from you. And then if they get away from you, now you have mice in your house, which yesterday morning, my caught my cat Ross, he actually caught a mouse and I did save it from him, um, and set it free outside. I hadn't had a mouse ever in the whole time I lived here. I think we lived here more than 10 years. Uh, but 
I guess Ross did his job. He caught the mouse and I let it go. Apparently my sister says I should have driven more than a mile from my house because that mouse will just come back. But if he does, Ross will be ready. So we were talking about different kinds of pets and we we're talking about dangerous pets. And another most dangerous pet apparently are primates. A popular TV show in the United States, I think about 20 years ago, Friends, in the beginning of the first couple of years, they had a little, I think it was a white faced monkey that would walk, he would be sitting on, I think the actor, his name was Ross inside the show. He would have that mouse, that mouse, that monkey, that I think it was a white faced monkey um, on his shoulder. I think he got bitten and that, that monkey was really a problem. So they ended up taking it out of the whole um, Friends episodes because of it being, you know, kind of dangerous. Um, and apparently it's the sixth most dangerous animal to have um, in your home. So I would not suggest getting monkeys and wolf mixes. Now we had somebody that had a program called Wolf Talk and he had a special license because here in Massachusetts where I live, you can't have um, wolves as pets. Um, but he had a special license for education and he had wolves and they would be at a big property and they would dig, they dig a six, under six feet, a big um, kind of burrow for themselves. And he would take them to different programs for education. Um, so that was called Wolf Talk. So Vignesh says, um, in my childhood days, I had fish um, in a tank um, and we kept a squirrel in a cage. Okay. So here we can't have squirrels and, you know, again, I would almost feel bad for a squirrel being in a cage. They, I love watching them outside. I really love to watch them outside, but I think that they would be, um, I think I would be sad for a squirrel to be in a cage because they're so active. I wonder how did that go? Was the squirrel like, you know, how did the squirrel behave in the cage? Because they are, they are very, very active. Um, when they're outside, I see them, they like, they get into it. Like the reason I started feeding them is they kept on getting into my bird seed feeder for the birds. And no matter what I did, they found a way to get into it. And they would, they would jump an amazing distance and hang themselves upside down and get that food. So I ended up just getting them their own feeder. Um, but yeah, here in Massachusetts, we're not allowed to have squirrels because of the high chance of of getting rabies from them. Um, so let's see, if you're new here, please hit the like and let me know where you're from. We're talking about, about pets. Um, like I said, I have two cats and two rabbits, so a total of four pets. And I've had many different pets in the rodent family. And we've had hermit crabs. They didn't live very long. Um, they they were kind of hard to keep. You have to kind of keep a heat lamp and keep them warm. And they didn't live very long, unfortunately. Um, we've had fish. Um, I've never had any birds. My my cousin and my aunt and uncle have a farm and they have horses. And they've had, um, you know, they had lots of cats. When I was a kid, I used to spend a lot of time there because I could not have any animals in my apartment as a kid. I always loved cats. So like I said, when I first got my own place, I got four cats and I think two is a much more reasonable amount of cats for having indoor animals. Um, so let me know what kind of animals you have. All right, so what is the, the national bird? You know, I think our national bird is the bald eagle. He's on our, I think he's on the quarter, the bald eagle. Um, and it's also a sacred bird to the to the Native Americans. So if you find any, if you were to be walking and you would find a feather from a bald eagle, it's illegal for you to take it home with you. Only people that would have a special license, like I talked about the birds of prey person, he can have that for education purposes and he actually will show that in a case. But it's illegal for me to pick up a bald eagle feather and bring it home only Native Americans can have them for their special ceremonies. Um, and it is the national bird is the bald eagle. We have different birds that are the Nash or the state birds. And I'm not exactly sure what the state bird for Massachusetts is. Sometimes people say it's the mosquito, which is not a bird because we get stung so much by mosquitoes. But then I think Maine would also say that's their state bird because the mosquitoes are way more plentiful there. 
So in my country, the national animal animal is tiger, um, and the national bird is the peacock. I love peacocks; they're so beautiful, and I love tigers. I when I was a kid, when I when I was little, I wanted to have a tiger as a pet. I think I saw this movie with Madonna, and she had a pet tiger. It was like a, I believe it was um, a white tiger. I'm not exactly sure, like w w white with the black spots. I don't remember. And or the white with the black stripes, not spots. And so I wanted to have a tiger when I grew up. I had no idea that that was probably a bad idea and that a tiger in the movie was like trained and that that's why it seemed like it was a perfectly good animal to have. But that having a tiger would not be a good idea because I was just a kid. Um, I also think I wanted a lion and I wanted a horse. And of course, I wanted cats. Uh, but as I got older, I realized that having a tiger would not be a good idea. Um, and tigers are the eighth most dangerous animal to have. So it's wonderful that you're t the tiger is your national animal. They're beautiful. I have only seen them in zoos, and I kind of feel like it's sad. It's sad to see them in the zoo because I feel like they need to be out in the wild, um, having them in cages, even in like bigger habitats. It's just very sad to see them in a place like that. They should be in the wild. Um, and they are, it says that there are 5,000 captive tigers as residents in the United States. And the majority live at, with private owners rather than in accredita accredited zoos. Um, I actually met somebody that actually worked for Michael Jackson and she was an elephant handler because he had that crazy, like kind of like, um, farm thing going on or zoo kind of thing, private thing that he had. And she was, she had gone to school to college to um, learn how to handle big, you know, animals like elephants. And she worked for him and he would have these unrealistic expectations. He would say, can you bring the, the elephants over at this time? And, you know, that's just not possible. These are wild animals and they do their own thing. Uh, but in any case, Tigers are the eighth most dangerous animal to have. So do not get um, a tiger as a pet. Um, so what is your, so you want to know the names of my, so my, the first one that if you started at the beginning, the first one that was dark with kind of the tabby, the, the stripes to it is Ross. And the lighter colored cat um, with the orange spots is Jasper. The white rabbit is Cloud. And no, sorry. The white rabbit is Cloud. Katarina keeps on changing their names. The dark, darker rabbit is called Coconut, but then sometimes she calls it Storm, so it's confusing. Now, the white rabbit, I have another name for it. I call it Binicula. It's after a book about a white rabbit because that white rabbit, when they were in the cages together, that white rabbit bit the other rabbit. And there's a wonderful book. It's super funny called Binicula. It's about a a vampire rabbit and the vampire rabbit, he doesn't bite anyone else. What he bites is vegetables and he sucks out all of the juices. It's a super funny, um, a super funny book, Binicula. Um, so let's see, um, Vignesh says, um, okay, still talking about the rabbits, the cat and rabbit. So I said their names. And so those are my four animals that I have right now. Like I said, I had four other cats and they were named Lucky, and Darcy and Bingley, if anybody wants to guess where I got those names from, they are from one of my favorite books. Um, and then the other one was called Tiger. And one that was called Tiger was actually the most wimpiest cat. He he should not have been Tiger. He should have been, had a different name because he definitely was a wimp. He was scared of his own shadow. Um, so do you have rabbits? Um, the rabbits. You know, I haven't really been bitten by them, but they do, rabbits do bite. I know when Katarina was part of 4-H, um, they did sometimes bite. Ow. And then I do have things for them to actually bite because their teeth keep on growing. They're kind of, I believe they're part of the rodent family. Um, and their teeth keep on growing. Rodents, um, one of the things about rodents is their teeth keep on growing, so they want to chew on things. So I actually have branches, like I have apple tree branches inside, like somebody cut them for me. And so they can kind of like chew on those and kind of get their their teeth to not keep on growing because they would keep on growing and I think they might grow down. 
Um, so they need to have something to chew on. Um, but generally, I don't think that they're going to just bite people unless like, you know, there was some rabbit that was kind of like, I know when she was part of 4-H, there was a woman that had all these rabbits for the program where she'd learn about rabbit, taking care of rabbits. And there was a rabbit that kind of bit. I don't think they ever really bite in through your skin, though. So, oh, so you watched parts of the Nemo movie. I love that Nemo movie. There's also that movie called Pets and Pets 2. I haven't seen Pets 2, but those are hilarious. Um, I would definitely recommend those. I really love the first Pets movie, and I'm not sure if I saw the second one, but it's, oh, I think it was called The Secret Lives of Pets. So basically, when you leave, what do those pets do? That Those movies were hilarious. And there's lots of really good movies about pets. I love a book called Babe, and it became a movie where there was a, a pig that learned how to be a sheep herder. Um, the book is better, but the movie was really good. Um, I love movies and books about animals, for sure. Um, there's a lot of really, really good um, books about animals. Um, if anybody wants to mention any, but I loved, I loved Babe. It's a children's book, but I ended up, actually I ended up watching the movie and I never knew that it was book. And then I ended up reading that book with my children and really loved that book. And let's see other books about animals. Um, there is a whole series like, a, like, what was it? There was a, there's some series that's a fantasy series about animals too. Uh, but if you're new here, we're going to talk for a few more minutes about pets. Please hit the like button and please let me know where you're from. Um, we're talking about pets that you have, pets that you wish you never had. Does anybody have a pet they wish that, I mean, I wish I never got mice and don't tell Katerina, but I wish that I didn't get those rabbits because they're a lot of work and they kind of, um, they can be smelly. Like they, they don't smell, but their cages smell if she doesn't clean their litter boxes enough. So you know, I, I would wish that I didn't get them, but she likes them. Um, cats, I love the cats. I wish I didn't get four cats, but two cats is enough. Um, but those are the animals that either I wish I didn't get or I've watched. Okay, so do you have, all right, so I've watched, I think I read that already. So any case, um, does everybody let me know what kind of animals they've had? Um, having animals, like I said, are a lot of work for, especially going on vacation because I have to um, arrange and set reminders. Like my father's going to get a text message that I set and an email every single day to remind him to feed the and give the rabbits water and food and messages to remind him to clean the litter boxes and make sure the cats have food and water. So all that stuff has to be planned for. And whenever I think, oh, maybe I would get chickens, I say, no, I'm not going to get chickens because it's already enough work to keep and take care of these four pets I have. And now when I'm going on vacation for two weeks, now I have to make plans for them all to be taken care of while I'm gone. So these will be the last pets that I have for my lifetime because I would like to just be able to go on vacation and not worry about animals. One thing I might do when I when these pets are gone is might do something called fostering animals where I foster cats until they are being adopted. So that way I can have a, a cat for maybe like four weeks and then it gets adopted. Um, but that way I'm not making this commitment of having a cat for anywhere from 12 to 20 years. Um, so these are going to be the last pets that I have as permanent pets. Um, that being said, I think... Um, if you have any ideas for future um, lives, um, let me know what topics that you'd like to talk about. Um, we can have discussions about many different topics. I love to talk about many things. So if you have any ideas for what we can talk about next time, um, cats and dogs. So, you know, I, for me, I find that the cats are, I like cats better. That's just my thing, but apparently dogs are more popular around the world. I think dogs are more loyal cats. They'll come and sit on your lap when they want to. A dog will just come and sit on your lap all the time and will be a, probably a better friend. But I just always like cats better. And I think cats are just easier because, you know, I don't have to take them out for a walk. Um, they're easier to go on vacation and be able to take care of. Like, I don't know what I'd do if I had a dog. I'd have to probably, you know, see if someone else would come and take care of them. 
I don't know, think I could get my father to take a dog out for a walk twice a day. Um, so for me, having cats was just easier and they definitely are more, more of a personality than the rabbits. Um, but that being said, I'm going to close out pretty soon and I don't have any cats around to say goodbye because they all ran away um, or went to do their own thing because they have their own personality and they will not come if you call them. Hello, Noah. Um, Noah, where are you from? Thank you for joining. We're talking about cats. We're talking about dogs. We're talking about pets. Um, if you're, Vinesh says, if you're able to see somewhere, somewhere else, um, some animals had friendships. Well, uh, yeah, some animals I think can have like a friendship to each other. I think that's what you're trying to say. Um, and I think they definitely will mourn like if there is like another animal that, especially dogs, I think, I think dogs will mourn for either if another dog is gone. I have heard about actually crows. Now when have pets as crow, but Pets will actually mourn and have a special like ceremony for their their dead crows. Apparently, I just heard a story about that, and I heard a story about a whale that was holding its baby. This will mourn. Um, elephants have a whole like thing where they'll they'll have like a burial kind of place. I've heard a place for their elephants that have died and will mourn for the elephants that died. Um, I don't know about cats. I don't know about rabbits, but I have heard about elephants and crows and whales and dolphins that will kind of mourn for the dead um, for sure. Um, but if you are new, please like it and please let me know where you're from. I am going to close out pretty soon, but um, I'm not sure Noah, if you're still here. Um, we're talking about pets. We're talking about animals that you had, animals that you'd like to have, animals that you wish you never had. Um, if you'd like to let me know what, what kind of animals you have, that would be awesome. Um, I have two cats and two rabbits. And then I'm also looking for topic ideas. If you want to leave them in the comp comments, um, topic ideas for the next time, I'll be going camping for two weeks. And I'm, you know, I might go live if I have good internet from my phone and go live with my phone. I don't know how the internet will be, but I might do that. Um, so definitely let me know if you have some ideas, um, for other live topics that we can talk about. What I like about teaching English is that we can talk about all kinds of things because everything is a topic to learn about. You know, you all have to learn about how to talk about animals, how to talk about travel, how to talk about food. Those are some of my favorite topics. Um, so that's why I love this channel so much because I can make videos about all the things that I love because they're all topics that you need to learn English um, and, and vocabulary and how to talk about those things. Um, but if you're new here, please hit that like and please let me know where you're from. We're talking about animals. We're talking about pets. We're talking about um, animals that are um, good to have as pets, animals that are not good to have as pets. Um, let me know what kind of pets you have and let me know what you'd like to have for a future um, topic for live. Like I said, probably go live for sure in two weeks in mid-August. And I'm looking for a topic. So let me know what that is. Um, and that being said, I'm going to sign off and say thank you so much. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And thank you so much for all of you joining. And be sure to share the channel with other people. Subscribe to our channel. Like this video and share it with other people that you know that are learning English because we want to help people all around the world to learn English. Uh, this has been a project that my, that my daughter and I started a couple years ago and we want to help more and more people. Um, and then what do you think about, I'm not sure what you mean there, barrier animal, I'm not sure. Um, but Vignesh, send me a message about that and um, I'll let you know because I'm not exactly sure. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching.